Picture yourself stepping into a bustling African village today, where smartphones are an essential part of everyday life. But here's the twist. You won't find iPhones or Samsung phones on every corner. Instead, the market is dominated by three brands you might never have heard of. Techno, Infinix, and iTel, all part of the Tranchion Group. By 2017, these brands had captured nearly half of Africa's smartphone users, a feat that has largely gone unnoticed in the West. To uncover the secret behind this success, we must first understand why major tech giants overlooked Africa for so long. For years, Africa's smartphone market was left in the shadows as global tech giants directed their focus toward the US, Europe, and East Asia, leaving the continent largely disconnected. In the early 2000s, only 3% of Africa's population had landline phones. And to put it in perspective, Manhattan had more phone lines than all of Sub-Saharan Africa combined. The question arose, how do you connect a continent when traditional infrastructure fails? This gap in communication infrastructure created a unique opportunity. With landlines scarce, African nations quickly embraced mobile phones as their primary means of communication. Mobile phone users soared from just 17 million in 2001 to 53 million by 2004. Then came 2007, when Kenya introduced M-Pesa, a game changer in mobile technology. M-Pesa allowed users to send money and pay bills directly from their phones, bypassing the need for a bank account. Imagine a small business owner in rural Kenya suddenly gaining access to financial services through a device they carried in their pocket. This innovation sparked a ripple effect across other countries, with similar mobile services becoming integral to daily life. Not just a luxury, but often the only means of communication and financial access. Africa's digital growth faced significant hurdles. High mobile data costs, often over 10% of monthly income in 2019, made digital inclusion unaffordable. Global phone brands exacerbated this by focusing on expensive, high-end models unavailable in rural areas. Furthermore, these phones lacked crucial features for African conditions. Poor battery life, no dual SIM options, and insufficient durability against heat, dust, and humidity. For companies willing to focus specifically on Africa's unique needs, there was a genuine opportunity to succeed. Global brands simply didn't understand local problems, keeping their phones expensive and lacking essential features. Many people waited for a better alternative. Tranchion recognized this opening when it entered Africa, initially unknown and competing against massive global brands. The company did more than just lower prices. They created products specifically designed for local needs that others had completely ignored. Tranchion built phones for Africa by focusing on what people actually needed, not on what was popular elsewhere. The team started fresh, asking what made sense for local communities. Photography perfectly illustrates this approach. Most smartphones came with cameras tuned for lighter skin tones, meaning many Africans got poor selfies and unclear photos. What would you do if your phone's camera couldn't properly capture your own face? Transition changed this by training their cameras with millions of local faces and studying lighting conditions typical in African environments. They developed phone cameras that worked beautifully for darker skin, even in poor lighting, allowing people to finally see themselves clearly in photos. Picture a mother in Kenya taking her first clear photo of her children. Transition also understood that most people use two SIM cards to switch between providers for better coverage or prices. Their phones came with dual SIM slots as standard, giving people an easy way to manage costs and stay connected without juggling multiple devices. Power was another major priority. In many areas, electricity isn't always reliable. So instead of chasing flashy screens or ultra-fast processors, Tranchion focused on long-lasting batteries ones that could keep going for days on a single charge. In these markets, reliable power wasn't a luxury, it was essential. Durability was just as important. These phones were built to handle dust, heat, and the kind of rough handling that would leave many competitors in pieces. The company cared less about slim designs and more about ensuring the phones kept working. These choices built tremendous trust among African consumers. Tranchion invested heavily in research and development to continuously improve their products. In 2023, the company put around $200 million 
about 6.5% of their revenue, into new technology. This funding improved cameras, batteries, software, and phone durability. Tranchin also launched at least 10 new products annually, all specifically designed for African users. This kept them ahead of companies that didn't focus on African markets. Over time, Tranchin became a trusted name. Their brands, Techno, Itel, and Infinix, came to represent quality and reliability. People bought these phones because they worked well and lasted long. Transient sold phones in Africa by choosing a completely different path from global tech brands. Companies like Apple and Samsung mainly targeted wealthier urban markets through online stores and big shops. But most people in Africa live far from cities with limited roads and delivery options. Many don't use online shopping or digital payments. For Transient, these challenges became the foundation of their strategy for reaching new customers. Instead of centralizing in urban hubs or selling only online, Transian built an extensive network of small distributors and local retailers. This grassroots system connected directly with village shops and small town sellers. Retailers received fair profits, so they worked hard to promote Transian phones. This widespread network made it possible for people in cities, rural towns, and remote areas to get devices that global companies ignored. Imagine a small shopkeeper in rural Nigeria becoming the community's tech gateway. This approach helped people of different incomes and backgrounds buy a phone. Retailers became more than sellers. They became part of the community, building trust and loyalty that big brands couldn't match. Tranchin understood that selling a phone was just the beginning. They created Carl Care their own service brand to offer repairs and warranties. With over 2,300 service centers, many in rural Africa, Carl Care helped people keep their phones working longer, which was crucial for customers who couldn't easily replace broken devices. Carl Care also created jobs and offered training, helping build local skills and support communities. By having offices in several African countries and adapting to each location, Tranchin could meet local needs and respond quickly to changes. By 2021, Tranchin had captured almost half of Africa's smartphone market. By late 2024, its share reached 50%. This wasn't just because of price or features. It was because Tranchin was present and reliable where others were not. In 2020, however, over 200,000 Techno W2 phones came with Triata malware. This software secretly took user data, signed people up for unwanted services, used up phone credits, and installed unknown apps. Phones in 19 countries, including Ghana and Ethiopia, were affected. Would you keep using a phone that betrayed your trust? This breach put Transition's hard-earned trust at risk. Concern spread quickly as African users wondered if their phones were safe. Local news and government agencies launched investigations. The malware came from a third-party software package added during production in China, raising new concerns about how carefully Transition monitored its supply chain. Despite this setback, Transition remains strong in Africa. The company's reputation for practical, affordable phones gave it an edge. Sales and profits actually grew in early 2020, even during the news coverage. People stuck with Transition because their options were limited. The malware incident revealed weak points in their operations, other problems followed. By 2024, Transiation faced patent disputes with Qualcomm in India, Europe, and China. Qualcomm claimed Transiation lacked proper licenses for some mobile technology, despite having a 5G license deal in 2019. Huawei took Transiation to court over the use of a wallpaper image, asking for 20 million yuan and damages. These cases highlighted the risks that come with expanding quickly, especially when a company has fewer patents than its rivals. Transiation's journey to the stock market was equally challenging. In 2018, it attempted to go public by merging with Shim's Pump Industry, but the deal ultimately fell through. Transiation had to restructure internally and make further preparations before submitting an IPO application to China's star market in 2019. However, the company initially withdrew its application and did not list at that time. Eventually, Transiation successfully listed, though concerns about its future growth persisted. Despite facing problems like malware, lawsuits, and failed deals, Tranchin focused on addressing its weaknesses. The company enhanced supply chain checks and maintained transparency about its challenges. Instead of altering its business model, 
it continued to produce practical, affordable phones for African users. This steadfast approach helped it survive, although each crisis had consequences. Despite these challenges, Tranchin retained over 48% of the African market. The company remained flexible, loaned from setbacks, and preserved user trust. India subsequently became Tranchin's first significant test outside Africa. The market was crowded, with most brands targeting city customers. Transient took a different route, aiming for smaller cities and towns, selling affordable phones through iTel. iTel became the top choice for first-time buyers in these areas, and by 2023, Transient held 8.6% of India's smartphone market. The company offered better profits for retailers, which helped build strong sales partnerships. Marketing with Bollywood actors built brand credibility, especially where people trusted local voices most. Transient's India strategy followed the same principles as in Africa. Focus on offline sales, build relationships with local retailers, and respect regional tastes. The company also adjusted its product line, introducing budget 5G phones and features important to Indian users. Southeast Asia came next, with as many different preferences in each country. By late 2024, Transition matched Xiaomi at 16% of the regional market. The company adjusted its camera features to local skin tones and tastes, showing its ongoing attention to cultural detail. Local partnerships were crucial too. In Indonesia, Transition worked with Induit Oradu in 2025, gaining access to over 10,000 retail points. Its phones came with pre-installed apps and flexible payment plans, making them easy for first-time smartphone users to buy and use. In Latin America, where most phones sold were under $300, Transient offered affordable devices, worked with local distributors, and focused on practical features. By 2024, Transient had a 9% share and shipped nearly 13 million phones, a 40% yearly growth rate. Back in Africa, where the company first grew strong, rivals like Xiaomi and Realme have entered the scene with their own low-cost phones. In late 2024, Xiaomi's shipments in Africa grew 22% and Realme's jumped 70%. Price wars and more expensive components squeeze the business. What once helped Transient, low prices, now works against it as competitors use the same tactics. Transient's answer is to move up market. The company is focusing on mid- and higher-end phones, aiming at customers who want more than just a cheap device. The goal is to launch at least 10 new products each year, tailoring each one to specific market needs. But Transient's plans go beyond phones. It's branching into areas like IoT, home appliances, and electric mobility. Their Tank Volt electric bikes, which started in Uganda, are now sold in more African countries. New products, including foldable phones and solar charging devices, were shown at Mobile World Congress 2025. These moves show Transient is ready to compete with technology and design, not just price. Building a digital ecosystem is another focus. Services like Boom Play Music and the Scooper News app have tens of millions of users in Africa. By tying these services to its devices, Transient aims to keep customers loyal and open new sources of revenue. The company is also testing new business ideas like battery as a service in places where power isn't consistent. This includes smart batteries, energy-saving devices, and wireless packs that recharge with solar power. Transient's future depends on how quickly it can adapt. As Transient continues to adapt and expand, its success story remains a powerful example of how understanding local markets, building trust, and providing practical solutions can allow a brand to thrive even in the face of immense competition. Whether they can continue to maintain their dominance in the fast-evolving tech world remains to be seen. But one thing is clear. Transient has carved out a space for itself in the global smartphone market, and it's poised to continue shaping Africa's tech landscape.